everybody. Welcome to American Idol Unaired. I'm your host, Bennett Shear, back with another singer that you didn't see on season 21 of American Idol, Sarah Snyder. Hello, hello. It's so good to be with you today. Where did your journey begin with this season? Uh, Where you reached out to? Did you try it yourself? I came in super late in the game, actually. I think it was September. Um, so by the time that I got connected with, I got connected with a casting director through a friend who had done the show in, I want to say 2018, 2018, I think, or 2019. He was on, his name was Ryan Hammond, and he was on, mm. was it Lane Hardy and Lacey, Lacey K. Booth's season. He was okay. on there. Um, And so he had been casted for that season. And I think they'd actually asked him back for this season, but he wasn't going to do it. Um, And we were like, I was, uh, I'm good friends with him and his family and his sister is like my best friend. Um, And so we were actually at his parents' house one day and I think I was uh, dog sitting for them. I think his parents were out of town and, and he was leaving and I was, you know, going to come take over for the dogs. And we were like sitting in the kitchen and just kind of joking about it. He was like, Oh, would you ever do, idol and i was like honestly i was like probably not like i'm you know it's 26 at the time i'm like i just don't know like i feel like you have to like really be in it to do something like that and really be pursuing that and at the time like music is always something that i had done um but i hadn't ever really like you know tried the pack up and move to hollywood and really try to like make a, a thing out of it and so i was like i don't know probably not and then he ended up sending because this is very like him he sent in a video of me to the casting director that he had worked with, um, like I sent in a video of one of my originals um, and she like immediately texted back and loved it and had like put me on a phone call that day and we talked on the phone. And then I think that whole weekend I was just like, oh my gosh, like, am I gonna do this? Like what, like, what am I getting myself into? And they were actually, I think going that next week to Vegas audition. So like, I think we talked on a Friday and I think literally that next week they were in Vegas for the audition. So it was like super late. I was surprised that casting wasn't already kind of closed at that point. Um, but we ended, I ended up jumping on a call with the, I think the executive producers and like some of the casting team when they got back from the Vegas auditions or maybe they were already in New Orleans. It was like a few weeks after that, that I actually kind of like prepared, you know, my three songs and, and sang for them over zoom. And so by the time that I got like the green light from the producers, it was like two and a half weeks before the Nashville auditions. So all the, both of the first two auditions were already fully complete, fully filmed. And then I remember getting the call and I was expecting, I I mean, I'd never gone through this process before. So I was expecting that there would be like a Los Angeles audition. I just had no idea like how the filming was going. And when Ryan had done it, they did one in Los Angeles. I was like, there's got to be enough people in LA for them to do an episode that's an LA audition. And so then when she called me, she was like, and you're going to Nashville. And I was like, I'm going to Nashville. <laughs> like, th- I didn't even know that that was on the table. That's like how little I knew. And so, but I was like, well, I've never been to Nashville before. Like, that'll be really fun. And so we like, you know, got the flight situated and everything and booked it out there. And it was, it felt like such a whirlwind. Like, I felt like I didn't even have a chance to, like really think about it. Like once I made the decision, I, you know, talked to my pastors who are my bosses because I work at my church. Um, I remember like bringing it to them and being like, is this like feasible? Like, I don't know. I'm kind of asking this open-ended question of like, I need an indefinite amount of time off. Like I need a week off here and then maybe two weeks off here and then maybe like a month or so. Like it's kind of, it was like, it felt like a big ask. I was like, I mean, maybe it's not going to work. And I remember like sitting down with my pastor and she was just like, you need to do it. Like, don't worry about things here. Like we will take care of it. We will get it covered. Like you need to do this. And I remember feeling that as well. Like I wanted to say no, because I was so scared because I was like, this is like a big thing to go off and do. And even if, you know, they feel like I'm qualified, you know, enough to go sing in front of the judges, like there's no guarantee that they say yes to me. Like I could get there and they could be like, no, we hate you. Like go home. Like it could be a traumatizing experience. And I was so scared. And finally I was like, you know, I don't want to be the person that doesn't do it just because I'm scared. Like that is so dumb. I'm going to regret that for the rest of my life. Like I have to at least give it a shot. And I'm actually shocked that I made it as, as far as I did because you just, I think you're very aware throughout the whole process that every single time you sing, you're like, this could be the one that they're like, nah, like, bye. 
it's fascinating that they're casting up until basically the last minute. I don't know if every show does that. I mean, I, I got to imagine the way it, that some of these other shows are set up that they don't have that luxury because I know the voice, like they film everything kind of in one block. And I think similarly with America's Got Talent, but with Idol kind of going to the different cities and spreading things out, I'm sure it allows for that flexibility. Yeah. And I think they're just always looking for people, which is smart. And I think you like, I think people saw in the talent turnout for this season. I can't speak to other seasons because I haven't, like, I, I was a regular watcher at the very beginning, but I hadn't been watching in like more recent seasons. But like looking around at all of the talent, I was like, you can tell that they're like, they are digging between the idol across America and then between like just the, the casting producers that are always looking for people like, they got they got the cream of the crop like they yeah it's it's working so you can tell they're just like working like clockwork what's your headspace going into that room was it like i'm just gonna do this for the heck of it or like i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna try as hard as i can to get that yes i think i kind of varied between the two because there were some moments where i was like you know what all i can do is go in there and you know do what i've prepared and if they if they like it they like it and if they don't they don't but then at some point because i was on the i i think there were like maybe four days of um auditions for nashville and i was on the fourth day but i actually flew in like closer to the first day so i was there for a couple days before my audition and so we would get to watch every day like back at the hotel or like if we were in the waiting room people come back and we would all sing around each other so i had heard a lot of these people and a lot of them were coming back with golden tickets and then a lot of them were coming back with no's and it kind of felt like at a certain point like i saw so much of both that i was like i don't know what they're looking for like because sometimes you would hear you know oh this you know this voice was you know, too mature or, you know, this person didn't have enough experience or they wanted more of this from that person, but then from another person, they wanted less of that. And it's so like specific to each person that it kind of felt like each time that I tried to get a grasp on like, okay, if I do X, Y, Z, that's going to be exactly what they want. Then like someone else would come back with different feedback and it'd be like, okay, well, I can't really predict what they want. So all I can do is be true to myself. Um, and I think that's when like the kind of fire under my butt kicked in because I was like, you know what, like if I go in and I sing my song and then they're not feeling it, like sometimes they'll say like, oh, do you have another song? But sometimes they seem to have a pretty quick opinion right away and they don't necessarily always ask for a second song. And so I kind of determined in, in myself that I was like, you know what, Sarah, like this is very not normal to like my personality. I'm not really like a pusher like that, but I was like, if you don't feel like they're feeling it after the first song, you whip out their, your second song and you're like, you're, like go. you're not going to take no for an answer, which I don't know what came over me. It must've just been like seeing so many people come back and being like, they're saying no to so many talented people. Like I might as well just give it a shot because the song that I actually sang as my first song, which was the only song I ended up singing for them in that audition, but it was one of my own songs. It wasn't necessarily the most vocally impressive song, but it really showed, I feel like, who I was as an artist. And picking songs, I feel like, is the hardest part, might be the hardest part of the whole thing because it, there's a lot of pressure each week on like this or each challenge on this one specific song that has to show, you want them to show like, you know, a hundred different parts of your voice and all this range. And so, I, I had settled on my song, but I was like, they might not be that impressed vocally. Like, I hope that they're maybe impressed with my songwriting or with like, you know, the emotion that the song carries, but like they could be left feeling like, oh, we wanted to see a little bit more because I'm going in knowing that like they're seeing people that are belting like crazy and doing all these crazy things. I'm like, I don't know if they'll be bored with my song or what. And so my second song was like pretty different from my first one and so going in i was like you know if they're bored with the first one i'm just gonna like I, i'll just keep flipping out songs <laughs> until they find something that they're that they like and if they just hate it at the end then that's fine but yeah they end up i think i ended up offering to do a second one or what did i say i said something you kind of like go in there and black out um, and I, I think it was Lionel or something that said like, no, you're good. Like you're good. Like we don't need one, but I was kind of ready to be like, what do you want from me? Like, I'll, you know, do you need a tap dance? Like, like what, what do you need? Like, I'll, I'll kind of do it. And they ended up being pleased with the first one, which is such a relief because I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like that worked.
And this is making me miss the season. Like you're a contestant. You probably miss it, right? Being there with everybody. I do. It was such a good season. And like, maybe I, obviously I'm biased because I was on the season and obviously I haven't like, you know, watched in depth, like some of the last couple seasons, but like, it was so heartwarming and like, you know, especially just like sitting there and watching your friends up there and like, you're rooting for things. And it was just, I don't know. It was so cool to see. And like, even watching all of your, um, you know, interviews with people and, you know, listening to those podcasts. And then like, I've been like lurking on the Reddit threads and like my mom's been lurking on the Reddit threads, like seeing what everyone's been saying. It's been kind of cool, like knowing what I know and then seeing all the feedback from people and still getting to be so proud of everything that we, that we did. And I think that was, that was something that we really prayed for. I remember in, in Hollywood week, I forget what day it was. It was maybe like before, showstoppers there was a group of us that got together and we were just you know having some it was a group of us that were you know believers and got together and to do some worship and it was just praying over this season and i just remember that being like one of the things that like we prayed about is just that this would be a season that was filled with what filled with so much goodness that it wouldn't be like a season that was like um what's it called highlighted by like any any negativity yeah um, but that it would be like the nicest contestants that we would, you know, that that would that would be felt through the screen um, that we were, you know, that we, we got along, that there was a friendship, that there was, you know, good intentions and that that was what was highlighted. Um, and like looking back, like I was just so proud of like every person. I feel like they did like really exemplify that. Of course, there were like moments of, you know, it's TV, so they're highlighting little moments of drama. Um, but I feel like you got to see like the good of the whole season and and that coupled with how talented everyone was. I feel like the the structure that Idol has taken, at least in the last couple of years, kind of lends itself to that because they really have gotten to let you know each and every person individually, at least out of the people that they share. And I think with their push to even have people share more original music, like you get that insight into people. And I think I've seen like some of the stuff that I've seen online is people talking about like, oh, well, you know, is it not a vocal competition anymore? You know, because you're comparing like, oh, this person's vocals are stronger than this person's and and all of this. But like, I actually love that American Idol has taken it more to the space of like, no, that we're, we're looking at people as a whole, as an artist. Like it's not because vocals are so subjective. Like you can say that someone who has a higher belt than someone else is a better vocalist when really like their voices are just different. Every voice is different. It's it's apples and oranges. But then when you see people come in and they have this original music or they have this like just personable, I don't know how to say it, personable air about them, like this charm that draws people in, like, or, you know, maybe their sense of personal style. It's like, it all makes up an artist. And I feel like we saw so many people this season that like had all of that. And it's like, that's, I think that's why you can't just look at someone's voice or like you know give them a test of like okay can you sing this note and that note and do this riff and that riff and you know whoever can do the most should be the winner it really is like an all-encompassing thing and i think this season what i saw was like really really well-rounded artists from everyone and that was really cool to see because i think that's more indicative of the industry as a whole because you don't just sign on because you love someone's voice you end up following them because you fall in love with their personality and their music and their writing and their perspective and, and all of that and it was it was cool to see that in this season you have to consider their vocals but truthfully not everybody watching might necessarily know how to judge vocals the same way that a singer or a vocal coach would to begin with when i'm not even a trained vocalist myself or you know what i mean i think sometimes the people online are more judgy than the judges themselves that was honestly one of the biggest things that i was kind of grateful for like not being aired is a double-edged sword because to one degree i was like oh my gosh like i gave all of these performances and i was honestly probably a little naive going in because i thought like oh man well i made it i made it like you know farther than like a good amount of other people like so I'm like they're sure they, they must show you know some part of me like I'm maybe they'll show at least one performance or something like that and I was so naive because obviously they didn't end up showing any of it but the good part of that was that I didn't get slaughtered online like some other people like I, I remember reading things and being like I hope my friends are not reading these because this the, it, it, I can't even imagine that backlash I, I know i heard back from you know a couple of them who i know you know got it pretty hard but like 
that it's just, yeah, people online, like, it's like you just assume that people aren't reading it or, you know, they feel like they can say anything because they're behind a screen. And there there's a difference between, you know, constructive criticism and just like full on bashing people. And I guess, I guess I do feel like I escaped a little bit in a sense because I'm like, well, they never heard me sing. So no one could ever say that I was terrible on the show because no one will ever know other than those of us who were there. Yes. Well, you, you definitely are not a terrible singer. You're a wonderful singer. And <laughs> <laughs> so i i want to i want to talk a little more about your performances um and and first of all how far did you make it in the competition so i made it to the show stop around so i got to do i think three performances in hollywood week i got to do my audition and then i did performance challenge duets and then my showstopper performance what was your favorite performance i think duets because what i didn't expect to getting up there because i like part of my job I'm the music director at my church and so I sing every single week obviously it's in a different context and it's in a context where I'm very comfortable but in my head going in I was like well I sing multi I sing for multiple services a week like I'm I'm always you know singing I've done you know voice lessons in the past I'm like I I feel very like comfortable with with my singing and then what I didn't account for though is that I don't perform every week like there are people that, you know, I competed alongside where they're gigging regularly. They have, you know, maybe every night of the week, sometimes different gigs, they're performing in different venues for different crowds. And what I didn't anticipate is how much of an advantage that is because I was suddenly in front of all these new people on a stage that I'm not used to. And so every time I would get up there, like, especially for, for Hollywood week, um, I would, I would just get so nervous. Like I wouldn't even feel super nervous before. And then they would hand me my microphone and I'd be right off stage about to go on. And my body would just start shaking. And I was like, Sarah, you need to calm down. Like you need to be cool, chill out. And I would just shake cause I was so nervous. And so being able to do my duet, I did, I don't know. You haven't talked with Avery Logan, right? I think I would have. Okay. I was going to say, I think I would have seen that. I think I've caught most of the episodes. Um, but that was my duet partner. She also didn't get aired, um, which was really unfortunate because she's super, super talented. And so we got to do our duet together. And I think having someone else up there with me and having like, even with that, we sort of had like, not court, not full choreography, but we had like blocking on the stage. Um, and I think having something to focus on and having another person to kind of like, you know, like you're playing ping pong, you're kind of going back and forth with made the nerves a lot more calm. So that was my favorite. And I just, I love harmonizing and she's, I thought I was good at harmonies. She's even better at harmonies. She's crazy. She was like writing harmonies for us that I was like having to learn and like actually struggling <laughs> with a bit. Like there were a couple where I was like, okay, I'm just not going to learn that one. Like that one's not going to stick. Like let's stick to this one, this one, this one, because like the, I don't know. I thought I was, you know, not the queen of harmonies, but I was like, oh, I can, I can do harmonies. Like I, I, I know all these. And then the ones that she was coming up with were so complex and so beautiful. Cause she's just, that's like her wheel out. She's so good at it. And so the arrangement we put together, we actually did um, as it was by Harry Styles um and i loved it i think that's probably the one that like if if i could have had any of my performances shown obviously i would have wanted like my own song that i did at my audition to be shown like that would have been really cool but i am so sad that we don't have the footage of the duet because i loved it so much it was kind of like uh like because the song as it was is like a pretty big upbeat like there's a lot of you know different sounds in it um and we did it like really kind of like stripped down and almost kind of like not eerie but like just just very different from the original and it was so pretty and I was so proud of it and I was so that was like the one where I was like no like they didn't show it but I actually have a clip on my Instagram of it because we had like a recording a voice memo recording from our like 3 a.m. session with the music director because of course during duets that's when you're doing things is three in the morning you're not getting any sleep and so I had like the um the voice memo of that and then I dubbed it over a video that we had happened to take of us like running through the song in the waiting room where we like weren't really singing we were like singing lightly to ourselves and so I like edited them <laughs> together so I could have like some semblance of what the performance was and honestly sometimes I still listen back to it and I just get like so 
happy because I loved it oh. so much. So that was definitely my favorite. Are there any advantages that you felt you had in the competition once you got to work with the band being a music director yourself? Were there any conversations that you had with Chris or Fredly where there were any bonding moments just from one music director to another? Mm, um, I think it, it was hard to say with Chris because I think I, I thought that we were going to get a little bit more time with them. I know like pretty much right after I got cut, those rehearsals with the band got longer. Um, but, and I don't know where I, I must have like misunderstood this information at some point, but I thought that we were going to have sort of an actual rehearsal for showstoppers with the band. Um, and it was more of like a sound check. Like we were able to give feedback and stuff. And we had a previous rehearsal with our, like with, you know, the, the keyboardist and with, uh, the vocal coach India. Um, and well, there were a couple of different vocal coaches, but, um, we were able to have those rehearsals, but with the full band, there wasn't as much. And we also didn't have in-ears for Showstopper, which I understand why they don't do that because they'd only do the custom in-ears once you get to like the live shows in Hawaii and everything. But I almost wish I had even, I was like, I have in-ears that I could like bring because like it was kind of hard to hear the band. But I, I will say that I think that the experience that I have with playing li with live bands did help because I think I would have been a lot more freaked out by that if I hadn't had that prior experience. Because I was, even with having that experience, I was like, oh man, like I wish I had in-ears in or I wish we had a little bit more time to work through this but they're so talented that like pretty much what i relayed in the like the more stripped down rehearsals was exactly what was relayed to the band and they pretty much played it to a t um and so that was that was pretty smooth but working with fredley it was kind of nice because like we were able to kind of throw out throw out ideas because the song that i did for my um performance challenge was my backup audition song so when we got into Hollywood I was like let's run it back like let, we're gonna do the same thing and I think he, I think we had played around with like oh you know he was like oh do you, you know did you want to do it on a different instrument and so we kind of tried it a couple different ways and I feel like it's probably hard for me to gauge how much it helped me you know because we didn't seem to have any like big issues with any of the instrumentation but I can definitely tell that if I hadn't had that experience I probably would have been so freaked out because I was already freaked out by certain things that I felt like I didn't have the experience for so I, I think it definitely helped what was that song in the performance challenge it's Demi Lovato tell me you love me I was like the, the uh. <laughs> name just like slipped out which actually a couple people I think ended up doing I don't know if any of them ended up airing but there were a couple of us that did it and we ended up doing it um on the acoustic guitar um because it's a pretty like big song and we kind of like stripped it back and made it a little more like vibey i don't know if that's the right word um but i really really love that arrangement um and so that was the one that we did for performance challenge um and then i did i, I did get to sit down with jordan sparks and we did like the mentorship for that and she helped me with that because the I, that's why i chose performance because i was like i'm not i'm used to singing and i'm used to like even leading worship but i'm not used to like performing i'm not used to like moving around a stage and like you know looking at the audience or looking at the judges and all that and she helped me a ton with that because that was way out of my comfort zone are there any memories that you have of katie luke and lionel whether it's feedback they gave you or just moments that you experienced meeting the judges one thing that really stood out to me from katie and auditions was that she was just expressing to me like how important vulnerability is because they were asking me obviously they're asking you about your story and they want to get to know you and i started to get choked up and i was so frustrated because my one thing was i was like sarah like don't cry because once you start crying i just feel like nothing sounds good after that like you can try to you know get through it vocally but i, I like I, I put so much pressure on myself to want it to be perfect and so they were asking about my, my part of my story which involves my dad who we lost two almost two years ago um and so that was a big part of my story and so i was you know telling them about him and then i started to get choked up and i was like dang it i wasn't supposed to cry and i like i'm like verbalizing that and she's like she's like it's okay like you it's okay to be vulnerable like you have to show that side of yourself and so i think that helped me give myself a lot of grace and also helped me realize that I actually find that it's the contestants that are able to be the most vulnerable that I like the most and that I'm able to connect with the most. So it's funny when like, you know, I'm up there like wanting everything to be like picture perfect and it just, that's 
not that's not how it's well not that that's not how it's supposed to be but like that's not even what i oh i'm getting so mixed up with my words this is my first podcast this has been fun i'm actually surprised that i haven't gotten more mixed up with my words because my brain gets ahead of me sometimes and then i'm talking and then i'm like where am i where am i talking to um but yeah just her explaining how important vulnerability was and like allowing me to do that i think helped me be more vulnerable in the future i think that there are probably people that you see in the industry that you would see in that scenario. And the second the cameras are off, I'm sure there's like a switch and they're just like, you know, deadpan and all that. So to see that all of them cared enough about us to like still be so personable. And I'm sure they're so tired throughout the whole thing. Like they're not just filming this, they're, you know, running back and forth, flying and doing shows and all of that. Like to see that they were so kind really made an impact on me. And I hope on everyone else like just to show us like you know it doesn't matter how big you are like don't get too big for your britches like you can still be kind to everyone you can still like make a positive impact in that way and that you know it doesn't have to be this this you know story of you know these people that make it big and then they're just like jerks to everyone because they weren't like that to us at all which was really nice that's important i think we discussed all of your performances thus far except for showstoppers i know we got a little bit into it and you talked about that rehearsal process but what song did you sing for your final performance? so i did a song called amen by andre day i was really i was really happy with the song that i picked i felt like it was honest to me it's not necessarily like a religious song obviously it's the title amen but it was it's more of like a, a contentment song like you know whatever's happen you know it's made me who i am and I'm, I'm proud of that and i'm proud of you know what i've been through and what i've overcome um and so i felt like it was the kind of like good positive message that i would want to put out there so i was really happy with that um it i think where i got myself in trouble a little bit was trying to compete with some of those really really big voices mm -hmm. and trying to get out of my lane a little bit because i have moments where my voice can be really really big but then i think when you get in the mindset of trying to compete with others and i'm seeing you know the like you, obviously you saw the talent from this season like you're seeing elise hitting these whistle notes that you're like how can a human make those make those notes and you have these big powerhouse voices like you know olivia's voice is, is crazy and, and and all these other voices and you just you start to worry a little bit at least i did i started to worry like oh man like i really have to pull something out of the bag when in reality like my voice wasn't made to compete with those voices in the sense that like i was supposed to sing all the notes that they can sing because i know that like my voice can't hold up with some of those notes because those are notes that their voice was made to sing and i have you know my own wheelhouse and so i think i don't know i i, tr I think i tried to get out of my wheelhouse and now like looking back i'm like okay i could have done this differently i could have done that differently i would have switched this i would have switched that but like in the moment i feel like i did everything that i knew to do so I'm happy, I am happy with that at the end of the day. I know a lot of times we're all our worst critics and it can be challenging to sort of like say things that we love about ourselves or our performances. But if you had to step into the minds of another contestant, because I know there's a lot of people that are like Sarah Snyder, she's so good, man. Like I wish I could do this like Sarah. What are three things you think that they would say about Sarah? What are some things that they would say about you and, and why you kill it? That's a really good question. I don't know if I've ever heard that question asked. Okay. Um, I would say, I think like one of them would have to be like coming down to songwriting. Now, like not everyone's going to love all of your songs, but like at least something that I can think that I'm proud of is the songs that I write, but also just the confidence to do your own songs. Because for as many people that did do original songs, there were still like the majority that didn't do any original music. And I know some of them have original music that they just didn't, you know, get to do on the show. Just the fact that I even had the courage to do any of my original music. And I like, I like my original music. So I would hope that someone watching would be like, yeah, I really liked that song. I really connected with that song. Um, another one I would say, and this goes back to like, your wheelhouse like my wheelhouse isn't the biggest and the beltiest it like I get I get strained up there that's something that I need to like work on more um but something that I think was really highlighted in the 
duet challenge that I did with Avery because she has like a, a similar voice um, in that sense of um, what am I trying to say? The my falsetto, like when I when I go to this really really light place, it's probably my favorite thing that my voice does. Um, and I think that people that listened to our cover of As It Was, like our performance of that, were able to hear that highlighted because Avery's voice does that a lot really naturally. She just has like the prettiest, lightest kind of like high part of her voice. And it's so beautiful. Like it's so like soft and controlled, um, but like really clear and precise. And um, I think when my voice does that, I think it's something that others would recognize as something that's really good and something that like when I think about it, like is probably my favorite part of my voice. But again, you like, you get in your head and you're like, well, me, this person is belting. So maybe I should belt, but that's actually not the strongest part of my voice. And number three, I don't know. I feel like those are, those are two good ones. I can't think of a third. I will say like when I really get into a performance, I think I can be a lot of fun um to watch and I think that I was just so nervous <laughs> like on the show that I never really fully got to tap into like having fun when I was performing and I wish that would have been something that I could do I think it, it could be something I could do in the future just in like other performances but yeah I would say that's probably something that like I think other people would appreciate about my performance but that they wouldn't have gotten to see on any of my idol performances because I was so, oh. I was just shaking the whole time. Well, you had fun filming the show, being with your idol family and getting to know all these people. I think that's what probably matters more than anything, right? Oh, a hundred percent. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for the world in the sense that like, I, if I could do it again, like, yeah, there would be things I would do differently, but like, I wouldn't ever say, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. Even after being unaired, which there was like, a little bit there where like after I realized I was like, oh, they're not, they're not showing any of me. Uh, I was like, there was a second where I was like, what the heck was the point? Like, what did I, like, uh, what did I just do all of that for? But then, then you, you know, you kind of talk yourself, you know, back down. And I realized I was like, I met so many people. I got so far out of my comfort zone. It's really spurred on for me, like a new level of creativity. It's inspired me to write more music. Like I think even, and I don't know if this is true for other seasons. Um, and I don't know if you've seen this, but like so many of us have continued to connect and I'm so sad that I'm not closer to Nashville or that I, you know, don't have a job where I'm able to get out there more because so many of the contestants have even moved to Nashville after the show or make it out there regularly. And we're all collaborating. We're, you know, writing music, you know, just at houses or over zoom or you know a lot of them have been doing song house and collaborating through that like everyone's just like I feel like it's unlocked this new level of creativity and collaboration that I feel like you know I think if I had never done idol like I wouldn't be sitting here today with you know all these new songs that I've written in the last you know couple of weeks and couple of months that I wouldn't be saying huh maybe I am gonna make an album like maybe I should like post more videos maybe I should put more of my music out there like before then I was like like even when people would be like oh where where can we hear you sing I was like I don't post that much like it just because you know you overanalyze every video and every lyric and you're like maybe this is gonna sound dumb like maybe what if everyone hates it what if you know no one likes it what if this just sucks and no one's gonna tell me and so now I feel like I have that newfound confidence of like you know what like not everyone's gonna like everything but I know that like God put something in me and I like I know that I have a gift for music I know that I love to write and that even if everyone in the world hates what I write forever like it helps me and I like it. So I should just get over it and post it. And that's like made such a difference in my life. So it's like, you know, you see all the the good things that come even regardless of, you know, putting all the time in to be there and then getting like three seconds of airtime where I'm just like hysterically sobbing. I want to hear quickly about the Green Mile and what that was like going to film in, what was it, Calamigos or something? Yes, Calamigos Ranch in Malibu. We did a lot of interviews. It's a lot of sitting and a lot of waiting um, which I think we hadn't really done. I mean, there was a lot of sitting and waiting throughout the whole process, but like for that one, especially you're kind of like, well, I'm done singing, or at least most of us thought we were done singing. Some people had to sing off, um, which I was kind of, well, I don't know if I was kind of glad that I didn't have to sing off, but I feel like my voice was like rough that day. So I was like, man, if I have to sing off, like this isn't going to be good. Um, 
but I was one of the last, I think, to go into the judges, and they brought me in with Sarah Mack, mm. um, which I think we both thought of was like, mm, that's probably not a good thing. Like, obviously, there were a lot of people actually that they brought in together, and then they ended up letting them both go in. But I think we had seen enough of that throughout the day that we were like, what are the odds that they're letting us both through? Probably not. So in my head, I will say I didn't think that we were both getting eliminated. I was like, if anything, like, okay, if they're going to bring in the two Sarahs, like maybe it makes sense that, that, you know, they're like, there's only room in this competition for one Sarah. Like, and so we're going to like send one of you home. So I wasn't expecting for them to send both of us home. Um, But I think they, so they, we went in, they sat us down and I think their main thing that they kind of talked about was, like wanting more confidence for both of us, which I think in terms of stage presence for me made sense. Um, but in for her, I remember being so confused because like we didn't, I think they didn't air her and Dawson's duet and then they didn't air her showstopper. But like, I remember the performances that I saw of her is like, she just let it rip. Like her vocals are insane. Um, and I never got an ounce of like unconfident for her. So it's just interesting seeing sometimes how the, the judges interpret things because you just can't always predict like what they're going to like or what they're not going to like. Um, but it was very, it was very quick. Like they, but they were so sweet. Like it was just, they just kind of went like right into it. Like sometimes they kind of pander and you're like, are they saying that I'm in? Are they saying that I'm not in? Like, what is this? And it was like pretty quick right away. Like, you know, you're not in our, you know, top 24. And I was like, okay. And then I was like, keep it together, Sarah. Like, you are not going to cry. And I was like, you're going to take it well. Um, and they all, like, they all individually gave us hugs. And they were, like, so sweet and so encouraging. And, and Lionel kind of gave the advice that I see from, that I think we've, we've seen from him before. But that a lot of people say is that, like, you know, this is whatever you make of it like this moment like whether it, you know you didn't you know make it to the very end but you can utilize this and utilize you know the time any time that you get aired on the show or you know even just the idol name and you can do so much with this if you want to so don't let this be the end of your journey and that was super super encouraging and they were they were so sweet it wasn't like you know I thought that it would be really scary like sitting down one-on-one with them um, but they were so sweet and it's confusing at first. Like even, even though I'm objectively able to look back and be like, I was not, I was not on par with that top 24. Like the the talent this year is insane. I'm not surprised that after the performances that I gave them that they didn't feel like I was ready to move forward. Um, but in the moment you're kind of like, you kind of talk yourself in like one way or the other. I think Sarah was kind of talking herself into like, I'm probably going home. And I think in my mind, I think I th- I think that was probably one of the only times where I thought that I was staying <laughs> like in the moment. I think for all the other performances, I wouldn't have been shocked if I had gone home. But in that performance, I was like, I was like, I think, I think I could do it. Like, I think I could stay. And then they were like, nope. And I was like, okay, I'm going home. This is over. And then you kind of feel the weight of like, okay, all of this is over. This is a weird, a weird feeling. It is, it is a vocal competition. And I got eliminated when I did, but it's also a TV show. And I think what they air is like, you know, is also based on that. And there happened to be quite a few contestants this season that had a similar story in terms of like they had lost their dads. And like that was like the storyline that we like that we picked for me that was like the most prominent in my life. And it just happened to be this season. Obviously, Ian lost his dad. Mariah lost her stepdad. Um, And I remember watching the episode where... um, uh, where Kay Elise had done her, um, had they had aired her audition, and that's part of her story as well. She had lost her dad. I mean, Ian and Kay, I think, lost their dads like just a couple months before mine was like the year before um, I went on the show, but theirs was just a couple months before, which is just so heartbreaking. Like, that's got to be such a, a hard headspace to do the show in. Um, but like, I remember like watching her audition, and, and you know, she talks about her dad, and then she sat down at the piano and she played an original song. And I was like, oh, like, and it was so beautiful. But it, like, you have those moments where you're like, that's exactly how my audition went. Like, I talk about my dad and then I sit down on the piano and I sing an original song. Like, they're not going to show 30 auditions that have the same story. It's just like, 
it's just not reality because they want that variety and you're telling different stories. And if everyone has the same story, then that's boring. So I think in a way that kind of helped me like put less pressure on myself that it was like, I couldn't have made myself have a different story. Like you can never know, like, like all I could do was like be honest about like my life and my experience and, and do the performances that felt right. And it's either going to fit into, you know, the story that they're wanting to tell on TV and, and how all those people, you know, all the, the different storylines work together. There's either going to be a place for it or there isn't. And there wasn't a place for it. And it's, it's sort of, it kind of helps me separate like that from feeling like it was my fault that I had like done something wrong or that I hadn't been good enough or interesting enough or anything when I'm like, no, the reality is like it's TV. Well, you talk about sitting down and performing a song and I, I don't see a piano, but I do want to hear you sing. It's Sarah. right behind here. I just wrote a new one actually before mm. I went on vacation and it's not completely finished, but I'm going to show it to you anyways, because I'm being more okay with things that are like incomplete. And I think as artists, that's like a hard thing that we have to learn is that we want to like wait until everything is perfect to show people and it's not perfect and it's not finished. And there are a couple lines that I'm either wanting to tweak or that I just don't have the words for yet. And you'll see when I get to it, I'm going to say, and something's going to go here. Well, I appreciate that because first of all, I've never had that on the podcast. And I also think it could inspire you. Maybe you'll come up on the spot. Maybe, oh, we could do this or yeah. you, know, you might get ideas. And this could be a chance for you to, you know, uh, kill two birds with one stone. Maybe this can almost be like a writing session. You get ideas after we finish. Maybe you'll be like, oh, this could have gone here. Or someone listening, they'd be like, oh, what if you use this word? So who knows? Turn the, one of your idol fam members maybe like, hey, Sarah, put this word here. <laughs> That would actually be incredible and so helpful. <laughs> I'm like, we can all just like, you know, snowball our ideas. I'm scared that life is passing by too quickly. Thought I would have a bit more time. They always say that if you blink, you miss me. Guess now I know that they were right. My baby brother's not so little these days. Now my mom's the shortest in the bunch. We're not the people that we once were back then. We've learned a little grown a lot One day I was in the backseat Long for the ride without a care Now I'm supposed to be the one who's driving There ain't a map that takes you back Daddy, in a matter of six weeks, we cried more tears than what we've got. I'm not scared of monsters now that time's the real thief. I've heard a little love's a lot, and one day I was in. Chair, he 
build me something, something will go right here. I've got some questions that I save for heaven. I've seen apathy still so much. And one day I was in the back seat, long for the Supposed to be the one who's driving. There ain't a man who takes you back here. One day I was in the backseat, long for the ride without a care. Now I'm supposed to be the one who's driving. There ain't takes you back years Oh, what I'd give to be back there Oh, what I'd give to be back there And on an A, something like that, it's a work in progress. Sarah, the storyteller, and such a beautiful voice. Thank you. I don't want to take Dawson's title. The Dawson's Dawson's the storyteller, but I it's been like really therapeutic for me to like process some of that out. I think when like right after my dad passed, I wanted I wanted to write and I wanted to get it all out and I just had like nothing to say and I went through like a kind of situation chip thing that like once it ended like I also immediately wanted to just be able to like process through it and get over it and it's really only been in the last like maybe like six months or so like really since idol that I've been able to like kind of unlock it and process it all and actually write through it and it's been such a relief because I'm like okay like I like it feels like you can like write through it and then like not that that thing ever goes away but you're like you're not like carrying the weight of it as much as you were so it's been like as much as it is like creating something for other people it's like always first and foremost like creating it for me to kind of like process through it you and Dawson really do have that special ability to take us to a place and maybe that's why you got so close because you're and one of the reasons I'm sure that's why it comes all back to American Idol not just being a singing competition any final thoughts any Anything you want to plug, social media? My Instagram is Hey Sarah Snyder. My TikTok is Hey Sarah Snyder as well. Hopefully in the next year, I am in the studio. That's my goal is to keep writing over the next, you know, a couple months, maybe six months or so. And then by by this time next year, I want to at least have a plan to be in a studio, like a plan in place and my songs written. And I don't know what that'll look like. I almost feel like I have two potential albums like I I mean like like my faith is so important to me so I feel like there's maybe like a more traditional Christian album but then there's like an album that's just like all of me and maybe they'll merge I don't know there's a lot coming out and so I'm just trying to steward that really well and so yeah if anyone you know likes what they heard then follow me on one of those places and then eventually if you don't hear anything about an album then someone just needs to keep hounding me until I put something out because that means that I've then shoved it under a rock again. But I hope that's not the case. I hope that I keep, you know, the self-motivation is there. So hopefully there's something come from, coming for me soon. Yeah, well, I'll be tuned to that. If you guys enjoyed this conversation, make sure that you follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Idol on Air Podcast. You can follow me at TV Music Guy. If you have not already subscribed on YouTube or wherever you are listening, please do so. Also, if you want to support us, please leave a review and some stars on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you may want to go to do that. Thank you guys so much. and Sarah. Thank you for being a part of American Idol Unaired. Oh, I guess I say thank you. <laughs> that is so funny. That is the perfect timing. Did it freeze? Wait. I think I panicked because I was like, oh, wait, I have to. I was like, oh, he's going to. Wait, no, no, no. Hold on. Okay. For you guys that are, that are watching this, we have had technical difficulties that have probably been edited out because I, I tend to edit out any of the technical things. So my instinct was, okay, it probably froze again. <laughs> no, I froze. My brain froze. Because <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, you said thank you. Then I say, oh, thank you. And then I was like,
But then as I was thinking about saying that back, I was like, do I say anything after that? And then you ended and then I just didn't say anything. Thank you so much for having me be on it. Thank you, Idol and Air listeners. It was a pleasure being with you. You know, it's just like two old friends catching up, really. Oh, my gosh.